नमस्कार नमस्कार हाय या आय बॅक सो येस हिअर इज माय पार्टनर इन क्राईम फॉर टुडे बिकॉज आय डायलॉग अँड हिज गोन हॅल्प मी येस सो also wanted to elaborate a little bit more on this um one thing that i explained last time the post position lie i'll try to incorporate that into this tiny dialogue that i'm going to do now so um for the sake of this dialogue his name is going to be balu and yes so um i'll do the dialogue first and then i'll translate so let's start la oh namaste balu temi lai kasto cha kan wasim ha namaste didi malai thik cha ta pa lai kasto cha ta oh balu bhai malai ta ekdamai ramro cha तिमी कता लाग्ने हो दिदी म बजार लाग्ने हो ओ बजार ल हस फेरि बेटाला है फेरि बिडाला दिदी वेल गुड अम लेट्स स्टार्ट अम आई विल गिव यू द वर्ड्स फर्स्ट द मीनिंग ऑफ द वर्ड्स एंड देन आई विल डिस्कस अम डिफरेंट ग्रामर एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ इट It starts the dialogue starts with me saying with namaste balu timilai kosto cha the sentence translated means namaste balu like bear whatever namaste balu timilai kosto cha how are you mm timi is again the space for you and kosto means how and cha means are but i'll explain the grammar later again um then it continues namaste didi he says namaste didi malai thik cha taba lai kosto cha ta so he says namaste didi didi is the word for um elder sister and it is in Nepali commonly used to refer to any woman that you have some kind of respect to because um like like you could also say bahini but but bahini which means younger sister but younger sister expresses some level of lower status so if someone addresses you with didi as a woman it means that they respect you you know and that they might actually listen to what you got to say <laughs> um namaste didi and then he says molai tik cha that means i'm fine molai tik cha molai is me um tik is fine and cha is is to me is fine literally translated meaning i'm fine and then follows he's asking me now taba lai kosto cha ta the last phrase ta just is something like but but like because i asked him first how are you and then he was like but how are you just like it's you can't use it in other cases as in the meaning of but but in that particular point it would be you could translate it as but but how are you you know i asked him first and he's told me how he is now he's asking me like so and how are you didi ta bai lai kosto cha ta so now we have here this major difference between timi and ta bai if you remember in the first video the last one before this one um i explained the four different versions the four forms of um second person singular in nepali and i said ta timi ta bai hazur so now you see the difference he's i'm addressing him as 
steamy because he's slightly lower might it be the age or whatever in the different context you know gives you this impression like someone is lower than you and he immediately addresses me uh, in return as Didi which is like with respect and with Tapai which also expresses respect so he says he could also say Timi like us to talk but as he already used the word Didi it's very appropriate to address me with Tapai right now he's going like it's like, yeah, it's very nicely polite, very, it gives you, like when I hear someone addressing me in certain contexts, especially when you don't know them that well and you meet them somewhere and they address you with tapai, it's some kind of nice feeling of being respected, you know, this kind of thing, especially as a woman. Um, okay, so then... It continues, then I answer his question, how I am. I say, Oh, Babu Bhai, Malay ta edda mai ramro cha. So the first part, Oh, Balu Bhai, just means O oh is O, oh, just an exclamation. Balu is like his name, Balu Bear, and the Bhai means younger brother. And here you have it again, Bhai in Nepali means younger brother. I could have also said Daju, which, which, or Dai, which means elder brother. Dai, not Thai, Dai. Daju or Dai, both mean the same. Um, but I said Bhai, and saying Bhai goes well along with saying also Timi. You know, he's like, like a younger brother, you know. He's looking up to me, and I'm looking a little bit down to him. Without, it's nothing like contempt there. It's like more a loving way to relate to him. But still, he is a little bit, you know, I'm the one who, who's, um, how can I, like, I, I just want to make sure that you don't get the wrong impression of, in that at least in that context, that Timmy and Tapai means something has some antagonistic, connotation to it it doesn't not in that context it's really like especially when you use it with these bhai didi daju bohini kind of relationships that are established there it's really more about something at least how i feel and how i experience it and i'm very curious to hear about what what other nepalis um what other nepalis i'm not nepali what nepali people have to say about that how they experience it but it's more, it's kind of like some kind of connection, some kind of, no, not, but, no, I can't express it that well, but maybe I'm, I'm getting it across a little. Um, okay, and then I, I say, Oh, Balu, hi. Molai, ta edame ramrocha. Molai, again, I have, we had that already, it's molai to me. Ta. I explained that also before, it's this kind of but, to me, but to me, it's not really but in this case, it's kind of, you know, he already said how he feels, and now I'm saying, okay, and this is how I feel, it's kind of a stress on the I, you know, it's like, oh, this is how you feel, and this is how I feel, do you get this? Ta, this is what ta means, like, you know, it sets this kind of contrapoint, in such dialogues we'll, we'll like we'll see it in many examples uh, further on and you'll you'll slowly got, start getting the hang of how to use the which is very very commonly used um eggdom or eggdom may actually which is kind of a flexion which only stresses it further the real like the proper word is eggdom but you can also say egdamai, which kind of increases the meaning. And the meaning is, egda means very or extremely. Translated with extremely because it's more than very. It's egdamai. It's so much. A lot. Strongly, you know. Like it's a stress there on this word. Egdamai. Ramro. Ramro is also quite a commonly used word. It means... Um, can both mean it means the main meaning is good good very general sense good like I'm saying I'm feeling extremely well you know 
I'm it's great. But uh, it can also have it's like especially as also used as uh, saying beautiful, ramro. So it depends on the context a little. But it's mainly used to express it's good. Whatever is is good. The weather is good. That's a good person. That's a good kind of person. Um, I'm ha I'm in a good mood. This is a good place. That's a nice place. Nice is also Ramro. All these kinds of meanings. Ramro. Hmm? And ta is, um, is from the word to be, which in Nepali is hunu, the infinitive. Hunu. And this is the flexion of hunu. Um, the um, uh, third person singular. Like in, in English, it is um, he, she is, is, <laughs> sorry, is like from he, she is, you know, like I am, you are, he, she is, is. And in Nepali, this is to. There's a second version. In Nepali, there are two versions of the um, verb hunu. I will explain that later. That's too complicated right now. But there are two versions. Just keep it in mind. In case you've discovered the second one and you'll be confused, ta. Very commonly used ta. Also, um, be be aware of the pronunciation. It's like a um, something that you might have to practice, practice actually, depending on what your mother tongue is. I had to practice it, and I'm not perfect at all at it. But it's um, actually once I I really practiced the sounds, the, the difficult sounds that are difficult for me in Nepali, really like in front of a mirror, you know, trying to really produce, like I read the description, how they are produced within the mouth, in the throat, you know, area, at which places, and I practiced hard. This is how at least my pronunciation is understandable for Nepali. I still have an accent, of course, but it's okay. So it's ta. A very strong start. Don't don't say like cha or ta or ka or whatever. It's ta. So that's like you can practice that if you want to. It's the worst. It's worth the effort. Okay, so I was there. So then I asked Balu again. Um, I I said I, I'm very extremely fine. I'm great. Whatever. And then I asked him. Which means, where are you like heading to right now? Hmm. Um, like I don't say it right now, but the form of the verb expresses it, makes it clear that I'm talking about like, where are you going to right now? You know. Dimi, I'll not mention it again. If someone still doesn't know what Dimi means, that's your problem. Kata. Kata is um, also a very nice and common word. It means to wear. It's a um, question word. To wear. Kata. And lagne means, in that case, means heading somewhere, like to head somewhere. And that kind of has very, very different meanings, lagne. But there, here, um, heading somewhere. Where are you heading to? And logne ho is um, the specific tense and it's the third person singular. Actually, it should actually read ho, second person singular. Timikota logne ho of heading. I don't go in the grammar right now. It is a future tense actually. But I'll not explain it really in this video here right now. It's too difficult. Much later. So now he answers Didi Mo like Didi Mo Baza Lagne Ho. Which you might already understand actually. Didi you know? Mo you also know. Bazaar you might know. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? It just means like market market, like bazaar, you like the word, you might have heard it. Uh, bazaar lagneho is like I'm heading 
Lagne who actually should read Lagne who I don't know. Mobu zel Lagne who. I am heading to the market. So and then being kind of already bored by this very short conversation, I answer la has teri betaula. I say okay, like la has okrat. The meaning of the word la in Nepali or the usage of the word la I find even more difficult to explain than the meaning of the word ta. La. Oh goodness. La. It doesn't really have a meaning, I would say. You could translate it as well, but it's not used always at the same in the same context as you use like well well let's go or well that wasn't a nice talk or whatever you just, just like just a filler you know a fill up filler word which is law also but law is slightly different um Yeah, la. Has means okay, like I'm I'm okay with it, you know, like has, hunter, has, has. La means well, okay. Yeah, let, let's let's keep it simple. Well, okay, that's what he says, and then he says ferry betaula. I'm not gonna go in the grammar. Also, the, the expression means um, uh, see you, kind of, in a way of see you. But it's literally translated, it's, it's different. Feri means again. And betaula comes from um, betnu, betaunu. Uh, betaunu means to meet. So let's meet again, or we'll meet again. Like, uh, but it's very commonly used and kind of used in the same way as an English speaker would say "see you," like "feri bedolai," and I answer "la feri bedolai," like Let's "see you again," and then we part. So I'll finish, and um, yeah, next time I'll be asking you to buy kostuta, and I'd love to hear an answer to that. Maybe you can like comment like how you are. Only if you're not Nepali, because if you're Nepali, I know you speak Nepali, which is nice. But and I love your language, but I won't be that impressed, honestly. <laughs> okay, um, la, I le, um, Oh, maybe for um, saying goodbye this time, we're gonna sing a song together for you. I'm not gonna translate it though. Um, which song? Balu. Hmm? What do you want to sing? Oh, that song. This is like a famous, famous song in Nepal from a very old movie. Um, it's a love song, and I just know a few lines of it. So I'll sing it for you. It's. I learned it also when I was the first time in Nepal. It goes. Maya kobari ma. Kritiko pula sangali rake ko kusumi ruma kusumi ruma kusumi ruma la hai that's it for today namaste and feri betaula <laughs>